Hello my friends and welcome back. Thank you very much for being with me again today. When you have an issue you have to analyze it from as many angles as you can and not only that you have to put it in perspective and uh, analyze it in the context it occurs. So when you hear a piece of news you know think about okay what's the whole what's the big picture what's the context here because things could be taken out of context and then they definitely have a different meaning that they normally had when uh, the issue uh, came up. So I have this little article where we have an American uh, Air Force General, the US Force uh, Air Force General, who predicts war with China in 2025. And then uh, he also tells the officers to prep by firing a clip at a target and aim for the head. This comes from NBC News and it is from today, the 28th of January 2023. And I'm quoting, I hope I am wrong. My gut tells me we'll, we, we'll fight in 2025, said General Mike Minihan in a memo sent to the officers he commands and by NBC News. I didn't know that you make plans for a war with China based on your guts, but, uh, and he's a Mike, if you know what I mean, and he uses his guts to predict a war and not the evidence, but things change. I'm very concerned for uh, my safety, <laughs> to be honest with you, living under in this kind of country with this kind of generals and no the fix is not me moving out but maybe improving uh, the state the poor ass state of this military brass okay just removing me is not going to remove the fact that this is this guy is a guy who goes and writes policies based on his gut feelings okay if i'm gone he's still gonna be doing the same shit to you so yeah I'm just raising questions and I'm pointing fingers here trying to improve this guy's uh, military uh, ability. This guy should not be around. Uh, he's definitely in the military. That's what I mean. A four-star Air Force general sent a memo on Friday to the officers he commands that predicts the U.S. will be at war with China in two years and tells them to get ready to prep by firing, and I'm quoting, a clip quote unquote, at a target and, quote unquote, aim for the head, and quote. In the memo sent Friday and obtained by NBC News General Mike Minahan, head of Air Mobility Command said, and I'm quoting, I hope I am wrong, my gut tells me we'll fight in 2025, end quote. Uh, Air Mobility Command has nearly 50,000 service members and nearly 500 planes and is responsible for transport and refueling. I have doubts that uh, he has 500 planes like built and ready to fly. I think the 500 planes are most likely on the paper and uh, if something happens, uh, someone else have to build them, with it, which is one of the big uh, sponsors, if you know what I mean, private um, military contractors. Why? Because I looked at how many HIMARS the U.S. has when asked to deliver. Uh, not too many. And the same with tanks. So I'm questioning these 500 planes. They have to have it because they tell us they need, uh, what, $820 billion in their, um, how do you call it, uh, yearly uh, budget uh, this year, correct? Correct. So. Minahan said in the memo that because both Taiwan and the U.S. will have presidential elections in 2024, the U.S. will be distracted and Chinese President Xi Jinping will have an opportunity to move on Taiwan. So uh, it is the Chinese that will move on to Taiwan, not the U.S. doing anything in the area. And I'm just uh, thinking that if we look at uh, the precedents, president, precedents we have uh, last, uh, last year, last president was a uh, Republican and during his tenure, he uh, didn't start any wars. 
So you say, okay, it's not him, dummy. It is uh, the Chinese. Okay, well, let's see what uh, what's going on. Now, this is where the context comes into play. All right. Ta-da! Reuters. This is again from yesterday, January 27, 2023. In Beijing's backyard, U.S. demonstrates its military might. So, who do you think uh, provokes who? I'm just asking, okay? I'm just asking questions. Based on this, in Beijing's backyard, U.S. demonstrates its military might. Now, you might have questions what's going on, people not familiar with... Uh, with uh, um, geography? Well, I'm eager to help. Here, this is the United States, our beautiful planet that we are using. So here this is the United States of America, obviously, right? And then we will go to see where the backyard is. So this is the Pacific Ocean right here, correct? So the United States is still here. And we still drive or fly right here. We're still going. And there we have it. We have, I'm going to put like this. This is China right here, right? All uh, right, here is China. It doesn't show me even though it's the biggest one. Shows me North Korea and Mongolia. All right, right, what am I doing here? China, right here, my bad. <laughs> I was north of it. I was in Russia. So this is uh, Japan right here. This is China. This is East China Sea where you hear the whole hullabaloo between uh, you know, flying all kind of contested uh, areas. This is the Sea of Japan. Again, China, as I said, is right here. The United States of America is right here. All right? So, uh, these guys are coming... Oh, take it easy. Are coming here. Where is it? Right here. Now you tell me who provokes who. I mean, by, just by looking at this little thing, and this is Taiwan, right, right here. So this is the whole thing where those those guys from United States come over here to protect these guys from these guys, or the, these guys Japan from these guys, or if you want uh, the South Korean from the North Koreans. They're the helpers of the world. Again, put this into context: who's coming to whose back door, and who's provoking or who might provoke. Whom? So, in Beijing's backyard, U.S. demonstrated its mi military might. South China Sea, January 27. Over a few hours under gray skies, dozens of combat planes and helicopters roar on and off the flight deck of the aircraft carrier Nimitz in demonstration of U.S. military power in some of the world's most, most hotly contested waters. Remember, is China Sea right here by China? These guys, I'm a little bit too excited here. These guys show their might over there. All right? All right, let me go back to this BS. I'm going right here. Right here is China Sea. And you tell me that uh, these guys, the, um, the, the Chinese, should be happy about it. But then we go to the first article, and the first artic article reads, Air Force General predicts war with China in 2025. <laughs> Could be earlier if you keep going there. And, um, all right, and his, uh, or whomever, the memo said, because both Taiwan and the U.S. will have presidential elections. It doesn't have anything to do with that. Trump did not start any wars. The U.S. will be distracted, and the Chinese Chinese President Xi Jinping will have an opportunity to move on Taiwan. That's why you have to keep your forces there, correct? Correct. <clears throat> this is what these guys are telling us. So, uh, he also provides a window into one capability the U.S. is considering for possible conflict with China, commercial drone swarms. He directs the KC-135 units to prepare for delivering 100 of the shelf size and type UAVs from a single aircraft. So he's ready, he's just ready, which is okay. You should have all this uh, um, get, get you know, ready for the situation. I'm all for that. But the thing that uh, these guys are pushing is that the Chinese will move in. That's why they have to be over there. 
and here I'm <clears throat> again to this uh, to this proud uh, military might that shows its power over there. Now, what do you think about all this? Do you think that uh, 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 U.S. will get in a war in 2025 or not? If we, if it will get, if it, it will not get, definitely with it, it or its own army. No, they will not go like a U.S. Army against Chinese People's Liberation Army. No, they're not going to do that. They're going to have other people fighting for them. And they're going to be behind the whole thing. Sounds familiar? Remember, U.S. P fights like this. Lately, let's put it this way, at least in uh, certain kind of areas on this planet. They use a whip and a long pole. It's like a uh, man, a tiger trainer at a circus, from far away. Psh, psh, poke, poke, psh, psh, poke, poke. And what is the lion or the tiger doing? Fighting with a whip and with a pole. Who are these? These are NATO. These are Ukraine. This is Taiwan. This is Japan. This is South Korea. And the trainer is just going to help from far away. Psh, 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 psh. All right. And as you can see, it's always, always, always far away from United States, far away. It's always going somewhere. It's like a common denominator. When you have a uh, war or someone bombards someone or someone does something, if you look deeper, not too deep though, you find the same common denominator. And it, <clears throat> excuse me, as it's not, and it, it's not Russia, it's not France. It's the United States of America. Hey, but you know why? Because we are the forces of the, of the good. So we have to be everywhere, everywhere, like Superman. That's why you have so many, uh, I don't know, uh, movies with uh, all these uh, <coughs> uh, imaginary, uh, full of power forces that fight the evil. Now by the Hollywood, which is just a... Uh, I can't say, you know what I mean. It pushes certain narratives and it's aimed at people with an ability of below 86 IQ. Actually, they said it. We make movies for an audience of 13 year old and below. Easy. That's why some people don't watch movies because they feel insulted. It's, they're too low. It's too childish. They're too childish. But hey, a lot of people have fun. Good for them. But the sublim subliminal messages in the movies Nothing there. You just went to entertain us. <laughs> yeah, okay. So, 2025, I don't think that's going to happen uh, uh, by then. I think it can, can happen in 2024. My gut tells me that. As valuable as that generous gut, I guess. Right? Thank you very much for being with me again today. Stay strong, stay smart, look for the truth, and be just.